What is the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God? Both of those terms appear in the scripture. People often wonder, are they the same? Are they different? Is there some sort of overlap? What exactly is going on? Well, what's the best way to investigate that question? Well, uh, we're going to suggest to you the best way to think about that question is we're going to go to our friend Blue Letter Bible, and what search should we run? I mean, this is not very complicated. We're going to run the search, open quote, kingdom of heaven, close quote. And we'll simply look every time the term kingdom of heaven appears in the scripture. So what do we notice? 32 times in 31 verses in the KJV. Now we're not going to go through all of them, but I want you to notice something with me. So the first time it appears is in Matthew 3, verse 2. And I'm just going to scroll down here, show you something. The last time it appears is in Matthew 25, 14. What does that tell you? Well, it tells you that the term kingdom of heaven is actually only found in one book. It's found in the book of Matthew. Well, why is that relevant? Well, let's go back to the dispensational chart for a minute. Let's just think through this. So if we know that the phrase kingdom of heaven only applies in the book of Matthew, we know it's, it's right there. That's the, the time period that we're looking at. What does that tell you about whether the kingdom of heaven has to do with the body of Christ? Well, it's, it's not a term that Paul uses. Paul never says kingdom of heaven. Look with me at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, and then notice what it says, eternal in the heavens. So the body of Christ is eternal in the heavens. That's, that's where we're going to be. We're not going to be on the earth for eternity. We're going to be eternal in the heavens. Now, when people think of the kingdom of heaven, what they often think is they think, well, the kingdom of heaven is about the people that it was being spoken to going to heaven. So that must be about believing Israel going to heaven. But think carefully about that, if you would. Can the phrase kingdom of heaven be about the nation of Israel believing Israel going to heaven? It can't be. Get with me Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And look with me at verse 5. Matthew 5 verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. When the Lord is teaching the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, what does he say about the meek? They're going to inherit something. What are they going to inherit? They're going to inherit the earth. They're not going to inherit heaven. They're going to inherit the earth. Now that makes sense because as you think about it, what did God promise to Abraham? When God called out Abraham, he promised him a land. Israel, as Abram's descendants, what were they going to inherit? They're going to inherit that land, which means their promise is going to be on the new earth. So then you might be wondering, well, what's going on? Because Matthew can't be about the body of Christ. The body of Christ is a mystery at that point in time. Yet Matthew is the only book that talks about the kingdom of heaven, and it uses the term 32 times. What's going on? How does this fit together? Get with me Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, and we will look at verse 9. Matthew 6, verse 9. Now this is the so-called Lord's Prayer. Let's understand what it says. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Notice verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
When the Lord teaches the disciples to pray in Matthew 6, and he teaches them to pray, Thy kingdom come, what is he referring to? Well, just to make this simple, let's hide the dispensation of grace. Ready? All gone. So, when right here he's teaching them Matthew 6, and he's teaching them to pray, Thy kingdom come, what is he talking about? Well, obviously, he's talking about the second coming of Christ. That's when the kingdom is going to come. We know that the Lord establishes the millennial kingdom. He does so after the second coming. So in Matthew 6, when the Lord's prayer is prayed, what it is really about, it is about believing Israel praying that the Lord would return at the second coming and establish his kingdom where? On the earth. Now read Matthew 6, verse 10 again. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. That's the issue. It's God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. So I think we can see what's going on here. When Matthew uses the term kingdom of heaven, it is not saying that Israel is going to go to heaven for all eternity. It's not going to do that. Israel is going to be on the new earth for all eternity. But when it's talking about the kingdom of heaven, it's talking about Israel receiving a kingdom that comes from heaven. It comes from heaven to earth, and the result is that God's will is done in earth as it is in heaven. That's what the kingdom of heaven is a reference to. It's a reference to Jesus Christ at the second coming, returning, coming to the earth, bringing his kingdom with him, and establishing his kingdom rule on the earth. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. Now, the terminology of the kingdom of heaven only occurs in the book of Matthew because it has nothing to do, we're going to go back to the other chart, has nothing to do with the body of Christ because the body of Christ is blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. It has a dwelling place that is eternal in the heavens. So we see then what the kingdom of heaven is. Let's compare that to the kingdom of God. So look with me at Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So in Matthew 6, not only do we learn about thy kingdom come in the Lord's Prayer, we also learn about the kingdom of God. And as the Lord Jesus Christ is teaching, he tells his hearers to seek the kingdom of God. When he's telling them to seek the kingdom of God, what is he talking about? Is he talking about the body of Christ? Is he talking about the mystery? Is he talking about the heavenly inheritance of the body of Christ? He can't be talking about any of those things. Obviously, when he uses the term kingdom of God, he's using it to describe that same kingdom he's talking about in the rest of Matthew. It's the kingdom of heaven. In other words, the phrase kingdom of God, that terminology, is broad enough to include the kingdom of heaven, because that term is used in the book of Matthew. But notice something with me. Get 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians and chapter 15, 1 Corinthians 15, and let's look at verse 50. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So Paul uses the term kingdom of God just like the Gospels do. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. What event is Paul talking about in verse 51? Obviously, he's talking about the rapture, the catching up of the body of Christ. Verse 52, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So let me ask you a question. Does the kingdom of God refer to 
Israel's inheritance on the earth, or does the kingdom of God refer to the body of Christ's inheritance in the heavens? Which one? And the answer is both. It's a term that's used in the Gospel of Matthew in reference to Israel's earthly inheritance, but it's also a term used by Paul referring to the body of Christ's heavenly inheritance. Get with me Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1. And we'll look at verse 10. And we'll start in verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, so this is the, the last dispensation, it's the dispensation at the very end, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. What the Lord does in the dispensation of the fullness of times when time is complete, is he gathers together in one, in Jesus Christ, all things, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. So in other words, Jesus Christ is king over all of it. The kingdom of God extends to the entire universe, both things in heaven and things on earth. Get with me Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. And we will look at verse number 16. Revelation 19, 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. Notice the all caps. King of kings and Lord of lords. Well, it makes sense that the kingdom of God would include both everything in heaven and everything on earth, because what is Jesus Christ? He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. There is nothing in the universe that is not ultimately put under his authority, because he is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. So what is the answer to the question that was posed? Well, the answer is this. The kingdom of heaven which is a term used only in the book of Matthew, is God's kingdom, it's God's plan for Israel in which their kingdom comes to earth at the second coming. The kingdom of heaven is what Israel receives so that God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is not a Pauline term. It's not something Paul ever uses. It doesn't have anything to do with the body of Christ. The kingdom of God is a broader term. It's not solely about Israel's kingdom on earth. It's also about the body of Christ's inheritance in the heavens because the kingdom of God extends over all of them. So that is the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. 